Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. It is Lauren Gates with Airway Health Solutions, and I am thrilled today to have our Lunch and Learn. I love these hours because we learn so much in such a short period of time, but welcome our guest. I don't even want to call you our guest because you're like the fabric <laughs> of the Airway Health Solutions. Um, our, I, I'm going to call you honorary faculty member, uh, Kevin right. Ollendor. Welcome, Kevin. It's always good to see you. Um, and there are so many questions we get you know, throughout the day. Um, each quarter on, on just the appliances and now the aligners itself. So we're really thrilled to have you here. Um, you have the 30 years of industry experience, which is, I think, right. longer than clear aligners even exist. Um, and you have a wealth of knowledge surrounding um, the expansion appliances. So we're thrilled that you're going to share your tips and tricks and then how they can uh, our listeners can apply that to their fixed and removable expansion and clear liner cases, making them simplified and seamless. So why don't you just kind of um, introduce yourself in a sense of how you got involved in all this and just a brief background to Ollendorf Appliance Labs, because you guys have been around for, I don't know, you got to tell the story. It's a great one. Sure, absolutely. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I and mean, I agree, these are really fun um, and kind of different ways to share education and just knowledge about what's going on in a more personal way um, than maybe, you know, email blasts or, you know, different things like that. So uh, with that being said, I'm the third generation owner of the lab. My grandfather started this in 1923. I'm sorry, 1933. So I was actually thinking the other day, this is our 90th year in business and it's pretty incredible. Yeah. So my dad took it over from my grandpa and I took it over from my dad um, about 10 years ago. I bought it from him. So, and, but I've been working in the lab business since I was a kid pretty much and working full-time at the lab for almost 30 years now. And to say that we've seen it all is, is pretty true. We've, we've been around and we just do orthodontics. So we don't do crown and bridge or dentures or implants or anything. We really specialize in ortho um, space maintenance, pediatric appliances, that type of thing. And so it's really helped us to get a really good knowledge base and a history of what's going on in the industry, how the industry has evolved and how it's changed. And we've really tried to keep up with the changes and be on the cutting edge over the few years. And it's transitioned in so many different ways over the generations and the decades. And it's really an honor for me to be a part of this and lead us into the next phase, which is really digital dentistry, um, 3D printing, and, and all the different things that go along with that. But it's also great to see just how orthodontics and has developed over the years from just mainly focusing on straightening teeth. That's all that anybody was ever concerned about was having straight teeth, to now being able to look at more of a whole body and a health um, component of it that can be so much more than just the straight teeth. And what's so great about what you've done uh, with your group and all the dentists that are working is they're really helping these kids and adults to breathe better, which is has always been talked about in ortho, but really over the last couple of years has, has come to the limelight of how much a difference it can make in people's lives. And it's really exciting for me to be a part of it. And, and I appreciate you having me. Well, great. We're so thrilled that you're part of our airway health movement because we really can't do it without you. You know, we're kind of like <laughs> peanut butter and jelly here. So sure. it's wonderful. And I know today we're going to, there were so many questions and I really appreciate everyone taking the time to submit their questions. But um, as we know, you know, Kevin is not a doctor, so he's going to um, ask the answer the questions that are specific to the appliances and his level of expertise. We will share with you um, some video recordings from Dr. Moralia of his expertise that may answer some of these specific questions that are regarding specific cases, but we won't be getting into that today as far as, as what to do on a specific case. Um, just some housekeeping items. Um, if you do have a question, please enter it in the questions and we will do our best to get to you. Um, if we don't answer your question live, that's related to the appliances and the aligners. Um, Kevin will be glad to answer those and email them back to you if we didn't have a chance to do it live. We will uh, have uh, one CE offered, but you must be registered on Zoom. Um, this way we can count the amount of minutes because uh, we are AGD uh, and PACE compliant. So uh, we will also give a code at the end 
so that you can submit that in a survey. So all that information will be given to you, but if you're joining us on Facebook, please register on Zoom so you can get your CE credit. So without further ado, I actually hate that saying, but it seems so appropriate at this time. I'm gonna right. um, give it over to you, Kevin, and uh, we're really excited to learn tips and tricks and, and share your knowledge. So go ahead and, and the floor is yours. Sounds great, thank you. So mm -hmm. in putting this all together, what I thought of is, just to try to answer a lot of the questions that we get on a daily basis about some of the different things that come up and, and try to address the most popular ones. So I'll go through that. And a lot of the questions that have been submitted, I'm gonna to try to answer throughout the presentation, but then at the end, we'll kind of see how we go from there. So I'm gonna to attempt to share my screen and get this presentation going. And you're an expert at this. I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm trying my best, right? So we'll see. All right. There you go. Just go full we screen go. and we're good to go. Yep. Is that Perfect. it? Yep. Okay. I'm going to sign awesome. off if you need me. Uh, just ask and I'll pop back on. Okay. Sounds great. So our lab's located in St. Louis, Missouri. And um, it's really nice for us because we're right in the middle of the country. So it helps us to be able to access everybody and be on a central time zone where we don't have to worry about, you know, being staying early or being late or anything like that because we're right in the middle central time zone so we're here to help you you know with any questions you might have and we'll go through that kind of as we go along here um, but basically what I'm going to talk about are two main things we're going to talk about tips and tricks but basically about fixed expanders and then about our expand aligners uh, how they work and all the different ins and outs with those one of the biggest questions we have with doctors is how to improve retention with these fixed expanders, uh, especially new doctors that aren't familiar with cementing bands or how these fixed expander works. You may have worked with some removable appliances in the past, but don't know how to do the fixed expander. So we're going to go through some tips and tricks to make sure that they, they stay in because really once they're in and cemented and in good shape, there's really not much left that needs to be done. So it's that beginning part that's the most crucial and can really make a difference in how uh, well the treatment goes and how everything um, you know happens with it. So one of the big questions we always get is, you know, why do expanders come out? And there's multiple different reasons why. And we're going to go through those and then I'm going to offer some suggestions that uh, I think are helpful and that other doctors have shared with us over the years. So one of the reasons is the band sizes are not the correct size. They're either too big or too small. And what happens with a lot of these patients is you're starting them young. So the first molars haven't really fully erupted. And so we're not able to see the full contour of the tooth itself. Most of the widest portion of the tooth is under the gum tissue line. And so the technicians kind of have to estimate about the size of the band and how it should fit. Now, our rule of thumb at the lab is we always estimate a little bit larger if we have to estimate. Our thought process is, is that if it's a little larger, you can add a little bit of cement and that extra cement, and that'll help hold it in place. If it's too small or too tight, there's just no way that band's going to go down uh, correctly and it won't seat fully, and that can be an issue. So band sizes are really important. One of the big questions we get is, should I send my own bands? Do you want to size the bands? You know, what's the best philosophy for that? And we've got about 75% of the doctors that cases that we do, we supply the bands and fit them. About 25% of our doctors send in their own bands. It's totally up to you. You can do it however you want to do it. I will say that if you do send in your own bands, you're going to know they're the correct size and they're... Um, you know, they're going to fit great. One thing you can do is if you want to size your own bands, you don't necessarily have to send the bands themselves, but you can send the size that you used. So let's say you used a 34 on the upper right, 33 on the upper left. Just put that in the notes for the prescription and we'll pull those band sizes out of our stock and use them for your case. If you, we have a conversion kit that are conversion scale that will allow us to uh, determine all the different sizes across all the different companies. So if you put down Ormco size 17, we'll be able to make that work for what we're doing. So that's another little tip. If you want to send your own bands, size your own bands, you can certainly do that and we'll include those with them. 
And this is what I'm talking about with it. So this is a really typical young patient, constricted arch. Normally you'd use the upper airway health expander, fixed version, but these teeth just have not erupted. And so try, we have to estimate how wide the rest of the tooth is in order to get it to fit. And you can see the side view of this molar not fully erupted. It's not in the plane of occlusion here. And so it, it's just can be difficult to get these bands sized correctly. Uh, we're doing our best and we're going to talk about some different ways to help with retention for these types of cases and solutions too as we go along. But uh, band size is really important to make sure that the appliances are fitting and staying in correctly. Another one uh, that comes up a lot is that the bands aren't seated all the way down. So the bands are designed to seat down so that they there's about a millimeter um, above the band to the, uh, the tip of the molars. So separators are really important. You've got to have some separation in there so that the band can be seated down around the tooth correctly. If there's an interference interproximally, the band won't go down all the way the way it's supposed to. And so you end up with it not fully seated. And that can also cause a lot of issues with it um, wanting to come out and not getting a good bond with it. So it se separators are really important. Here's an example. These blue um, rubber separators have been around forever. They work great. Um, you can buy, you know, one a package of them in a last year, you know, years and years. They're real cheap, but they do make a big difference. Uh, the younger the patient is, the longer you want to keep them in. So if you've got a patient that's you know, between maybe six and 10, you want to have them in for one to three days. In their teenage years and adult age, you want to have them in for about a week. Uh, so it's important to, you know, have good separation so that there's a good path of the band when you insert it to be able to push it all the way down. So a properly seated band should fit tightly. You should be able to see, like I said, about a millimeter to maybe two millimeters of even crown um, on the uh, occlusal of the band. So the band should be seated down over the crown so you can see tooth structure above it. And it should go subgingively. Um, it can be an issue with some of these younger patients, but the band material does need to go down. And you can see, this is a great example of, you know, if the tooth is partially erupted and the gum tissue is maybe a third of the way up, we can't see this wider portion of the uh, of the tooth itself. So it makes it difficult to see that band because it's so rigid that it's going to be going straight down. So it's where some of the issues sometimes come in, but this is what you want to see with the band, how you want to see it seated. This is what, you know, what you don't want. This is when you don't have enough separation. You haven't gotten the band down all the way. You've got excess material over the occlusal surface. Some doctors will say, oh, I just bend it over, but you know that, that can really cause problems with it and doesn't get the band fully seated around the tooth. It can definitely cause um, an issue and cause the, uh, the appliance to come uncemented as you go along. So you want to make sure these are fully seated all the way. Another thing that has come up recently that was suggested to me that's a really good suggestion is sometimes these younger patients, well, any age, but they've got really deep bites. And so they're biting on the anterior wires of the appliance. And because of that, it's causing a fulcrum effect on the appliance itself. And over time, as they wear it, when those, up, those lower anteriors hit on the wire on the upper appliance, it can loosen those bands because it's causing the appliance to rock a little bit. So a nice way to fix that is you can add some composite to the occlusal of the lower Ds and Es to just temporary, temporarily open the bite a little bit so that they're not biting on that wire. And this is the typical upper airway health expander. You know, it has these anterior sweep arms, which are super helpful to round out those teeth and also help to flare those anteriors out forward and just creating as much space as possible. But in a deep bite, the patient may be hitting or biting on those wires. And it can cause some issues, uh, like I said, because uh, you're biting in the anterior here and it's putting extra stress on these bands. Here's a good example from the posterior where you can see, you know, these lower anteriors, this bite is so deep, they're going to be biting right on that wire that's going to be laying on the gingival margin down here. And so this bite's so deep that you can't even see the upper anteriors at all. 
And this is a typical example of where you'd want to try to open the bite a little bit with some composite so that they're not biting on that wire. And all you're going to do is just place some composite on the occlusal surface. It just has to be enough to open the bite a little bit, a couple millimeters. Want to do it on both sides evenly. They'll function on those really nicely. And um, it'll open the bite so the lower anteriors aren't hitting that wire. You may, when they come in for their appointments periodically have to add a little bit more composite to them, um, but you know they're going to wear it down over time, but it should, it'll make a big difference with it. It'll also disclude the first molars a little, so you may actually get some eruption of those too, or it'll help with the vertical, so the bite will open up a little bit more as you're expanding as well, so it really is helpful. And you can put these composite buildups on even if you're wearing a lower expander at the same time. It's just a real nice little trick to get the upper appliance out of um, out of occlusion. It's also good for posterior cross bites too. You can do this to kind of open it up so there isn't any, any interferences with the uh, posteriors as you're expanding. Uh, some cases, and we all, we never want to blame the patient for this, but you know there are some patients that just for whatever reason don't want this appliance in place, think it's uncomfortable, and don't want it. And because of that, they may start pulling on it or playing with it. And as they rock it, it'll loosen the bond and have the bands come off. And it's something, you know, like I said, you never really want to blame the patient for this or um, accuse them or anything, but it's a difficult conversation that sometimes you have to have with the patient and with the parents. Are they playing with it? Are they fighting this treatment? You know, if they are, then, you know, maybe time to maybe do something else, give them a break or, you know, uh, temporary uh, pause treatment for a little while until they're more ready for it. Uh, just throwing that out there as a suggestion. Um, like I said, you don't want to have to blame the patient, but but it does occur. So what are some different ways to help improve it? I just went over the reasons why, you know, the appliances might come loose or the retention's bad. How can we fix it? And Dr. Moralia talks about a few of these, but these are also some of the ones that doctors have shared with me over the years that seem to work. And so, you know, when someone calls with a question about it, I'll share these with them. So I thought, you know, these would be good ones to kind of offer up to be able to help out. The first one is to add additional cement over the occlusal surface of the tooth that you're banding. It almost becomes like a sealant. And I know Dr. Moralia really talks about this in his presentations that he adds extra cement over that occlusal surface. And that kind of just gives you more retention and a better bond uh, with those bands to the teeth. So it, it just kind of forms more of a surface area to be able to bond to. When you're first um, seeding these appliances, everything is really tight. The arch hasn't started to develop at all. You're kind of fighting everything. Some doctors will start with half a turn for the first week instead of doing a full turn. Half a turn is a little bit less force on the appliance itself, and it kind of allows everything to kind of start moving and loosening up a little bit, so you don't have all that stress on the molars themselves and where that bond is. So a half a turn will still give you some expansion, but it's not giving you all that force right on that two, on those teeth right at the very beginning. So once you've started, you know, maybe do a half a turn for a week, once things are starting to move, loosen up a little bit, then you can have the patient start doing the full turns once a day, like Dr. Moralia recommends. And that can definitely be a way to help um, help keep the appliance in place and longer and uh, improve the retention with it. Another popular option um, is to add a rest. Now, what we can do with these is add on your upper and lower fixed expanders is we can run a little wire rest over the first bicuspid or the first deciduous molar. And it's out of occlusion for the most part. It may be a little bit in there, but it's just temporary while the appliance is in place. And then all you're going to do is take some composite and bond it right over the top of that rest. What this does is it creates another retention point. So you don't have that long span of from the molar all the way to the anterior where you can cause issues with rocking. This composite's another way on this rest to just lock it in place and hold the appliance in at another retention point. Dr. Moralia recommends adding a little bit of composite on the lingual of this first deciduous molar or first bicuspid just above the wire. 
you don't want to put it on the wire itself, but you put it just above the wire, it creates a little shelf so that the appliance doesn't ride up. That's another good solution. Um, you know, this rest is another one. So there's there's a lot of different ways to do it. Just trying to throw out different suggestions for you here. But um, you'd have to request these rests if you want them. We don't put them on there as a standard. But if you want to add rest to the appliances, just write um, on your prescription sheet in the notes, please add rest to first um, premolars or something like that. And we'll add those on to, to your appliances for you. We can also add that on as a... Um, uh, require or a, a note in your account so that every time you send an appliance in, we'll automatically put those rests on there for you. One of the nice things is if they're there and you want them, they're great. If you get them and you don't want them, you can always cut them off. So it, it's sometimes nicer to have them there and in place than it is to not have them at all. So it's, it's a nice way to actually um, add some additional retention to it. Another good op option, uh, especially on the lower appliances, is to ban the ease instead of the first molars. And so what we'll do is we'll place, a lot of times the second deciduous molars have erupted a little bit more, and so we can get a better fitting band on them than we can on the first molars. We'll always add a lingual extension to engage that first molar so that as the screw is turned and activated, the force will be distributed to the first molar and upright and expanded to. Uh, this works really nice. It's a great alternative. And uh, I know we have a lot of doctors that'll do it for both the upper and the lower on those E's if, um, if they feel that the first molars haven't erupted. Sometimes we'll just go ahead and do it if the first molar, if there's just no chance that we can bond to it at all. Uh, we'll just go ahead and add it on there. Other times, if it's close, we might call and ask, is it okay if we you know ban the E's? Uh, but it, it is a nice way to do this to uh, to um, improve retention and get a better band fit than trying to fit them to these molars that aren't erupted all the way. And like I said, we could do this for the upper or the lower appliance. You just have to let us know. So if none of these tips and trip tips and tricks, excuse me, are working, we have a new solution that I'm really excited to be able to offer and um, to present to you. Some of you may have seen our emails from us or some information from our lab already about it, but I'm really happy to be able to offer these and, and think that this is probably the best solution out of all of them. And that is 3D printed bands. So this is the latest technology. Uh, we've been doing them for a couple of years now. We've offered them full-time for one year. So last summer we started really pushing it. We did a bunch of beta testing before that to make sure that they were going to work and try to figure out all the, the workflow and everything on our end, but I'm really excited about them. I, I think they're really going to be a game changer and they are the latest technology um, that's out there for ortho. Some really great advantages. There's no separators needed. So you actually save an appointment. You can go from scan to insertion without having those extra appointments to uh, put the separators in and then have the patient back to seat the appliance. So it, it saves you an appointment, which is great. The bands fit around the crown and they don't go subgingival. So it's actually bonded to the crown itself. And you don't have to worry about the material, the band material going below the tissue line. So there's no pain when you insert it as well. So some of these younger patients, they're a little squeamish and, and real sensitive. When you try to seat that band and that band slide subgingival can cause a lot of trauma or you know, get them upset and that type of thing. You're not going to have any of that with these 3D printed bands at all. They, they cement right to the crown. They're perfect for partially erupted teeth. And that's really where we started pushing them the most and suggesting them the most is, hey, let's, this tooth is partially erupted. It's going to be, we're going to have to estimate the size of the band and how it's going to fit. 3D printed bands are perfect for this scenario. And we've had multiple doctors who have said, don't do any regular traditional bands. We want all 3D printed. They've actually sent appliances back in and we've converted them to 3D printed bands. So, um, it, and, and that's all they're using. So I, I, more and more people are doing that, the more that they're getting exposed to it. It's got great retention. It's a custom CAD designed fit. So we actually CAD design them um, in the software to get them to fit exactly correct. And it's gonna reduce your chair time because you don't have the appointment with the separators. They're, they're really great. 
this is a great example of what we see. This is just a basic lingual arch, but the doctor wants to try to put a band on this tooth that's maybe a third erupted. It's really hard for us to size those bands and get them correct. But the 3D bands, this is perfect for it. So as you can see from this picture, these bands don't go subgingival. They don't really go in a proximal either. Uh, they fit just in between the mesial surface of the you know, first molar and the second premolar here, but it doesn't go interproximal down in this area. And it's just bonding directly to the molar itself. And the retention on these is really good. We get a lot of questions like, oh, it doesn't look like the bond strength is going to be good. We have had the fail rate on these has been minute. It really does hold on strong. And we're going to talk about how to bond it and what material to use here in a minute. But they're great. They're they're really terrific. This is what they look like uh, with the typical airway health expansion appliances. And uh, like I said, they're they're real simple. They work great, and you don't have to worry about the teeth being partially erupted. Uh, they fit right on there, and it's everything's exactly the same once you get it cemented in place. So the steps for bonding it's a little bit different, and I can email you these. Um, I've posted them on the Airway Health Solutions Facebook page, but they're on there too if you want to go back and refer to that. But if you want to email me, uh, I can send you these in you know more detail or this whole set so that you have them if you want to try them. But basically, pretty simple. You're going to rinse and dry the buccal and lingual surfaces of the molars. One of the questions we get a lot is, what type of cement do you recommend for these fixed appliances? Now, Dr. Moralia likes the Fuji Ortho. Uh, cement, which is a great cement. We recommend for this using the Reliance products. We just have had better feedback from the doctors that the Reliance products work better. I do have doctors that are using the Fuji with these 3D bands. I know they are. They've told me that works fine. But, you know, like I said, we get a lot of doctors that want to know the exact um, material products to use. So I decided with this that we would do that. So you're going to want to go through, use Reliance Blue High Viscosity Gel Etch on the buccal and lingual, but not on the occlusal. So you can see how we've got it here etched here on this molar. Then you're going to apply uh, primer, the Reliance Assure Plus primer, just to the buccal surface and the cuss tips only. You don't want to do the occlusal or the lingual. These can be too tough to get out sometimes. So... I've had a couple of doctors report that they had a really hard time getting them out. And I think it's because they were over priming the teeth and a couple other things. But uh, for the most part, they, they're they easy to come out as long as you follow these directions. And again, using these Reliance products uh, really helps a lot with it. You're going to apply an even layer of the self-mix Reliance band lock to the bands, seat the appliance, remove the flash and then finish curing per the instructions for um, Reliance. We don't carry any of the Reliance products. You'd have to get that from, you know, your regular supplier, um, but the, it's great. And we know a lot of doctors are having success with it. This is what it would look like. You know, you remove that flash off of there and you're good to go from that. Uh, so it's, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward and, and uh, works great. They really hold well. So in summary with these, like I said, it's CAD CAM design. So the software, we're designing it specifically for each individual molar, custom designed. It's a little bit stronger than a traditional band because the material is a little thicker. Band material is very thin because it has to go subgingival and it has to go interproximal. And so this is great um, to be able to, because you're just bonding it to the crown. It can be a little bit thicker and that uh, just makes the appliance that much stronger. It can be used for any ex fixed expansion appliance, not just expanders. Uh, we do them for space maintainers, habit appliances, you know, any type of fixed expander or fixed appliance. And we can add buckle tubes or lingual auxiliaries, whatever you need with them, um, just like you would a regular band. It functions and acts just like a regular band without any problems. It's the latest technology and, and it will replace traditional bands. It's there's this fit is so much better. And it just really does a much better job uh, with the sizing and everything else. So I think within the near future, our norm will be 3D printed bands and we'll only do traditional bands upon request. Uh, for now, though, if you want to try the 3D bands, you just have to write that on your prescription sheet um, or in the notes 
and say, you know, please use 3D printed bands with this appliance or for this appliance. If you want to use them on all your cases, just let us know. We'll put that note in your account um, file. And then every time you send in a case, we'll automatically use the 3D printed bands for them. Another nice feature of them is that we can band multiple teeth together to give even more strength um, and more retention to the appliance. So this is a case where we've put bands for both the first molar and the second deciduous molar together. So it's completely bonded as one band. It's really hard to do this in with traditional bands because the you have to slide two bands interproximally uh, together right on teeth right next to each other. And it's a lot of extra space that you need to create in order to get that to fit. It also is really hard on the path of insertion. It's got to be right on the money when you're doing it with traditional bands, but it's a lot easier to do it uh, with the 3D printed bands. And we have some doctors that like this design. They always want us to band at least two molars. And that's just adding to your uh, retention. And it's just providing another retention point uh, for the appliance to help stabilize it and hold it in place. And again, it can be done for the upper or the lower. So this concludes basically the fixed portion of the uh, tips and tricks. And now I want to go into the expand aligners. And we're really excited about these. We've been offering these for a couple of years, and we worked really hard to try to get these setups with Dr. Moralia um, correct and the way that he wants it so that you get great results and your patients get great results. And this kind of stemmed out of the thing in his presentation where he talks about sending it to a line and how you would have to do three and four different, uh, or at least three to four different clean checks in order to get the setups the way that he wanted. And so in talking with him and talking with Lauren, we decided, you know, we can do this. We can create the setups the way that he wants them, which are, are real simple rules. Everything that he does, he wants to go wider and go forward. We never want to use aligners as retraction appliances. That's what can cause posterior open bites when you got the mandible trapped, when you're trying to allow the mandible to come forward, but it can't because you've got an, uh, an interference in the anterior because you've retracted the anteriors. And so because of that, the patient can't get their back teeth together because of the anterior interference when the mandible wants to come forward. We want to give the mandible as much room as possible to bite forward in its natural position, which will help open the airway, helps with some sleep issues, can do a lot of, have a lot of benefits for the patient. So everything is about going wider and going forward and all that's built into the protocol. If you do that, then you don't need IPR. You don't, we're gonna expand and develop the arches enough with the aligners that you're not gonna need IPR. You also don't need a lot of attachments because you're creating space for the teeth in their natural position and naturally within the arch, the teeth are going to want to rotate and they're going to want to be straight without having to use a lot of attachments. That Every once in a while, we have to use some if we've got a tooth that's really severely rotated, maybe a cuspid, uh, to try to give it a little bit extra force to correct in rotation, but we're not doing it to tip and torque the teeth. We're letting the aligners themselves do what they're best at, which is moving the teeth, rounding out the arches, uprighting them, and trying to get the, the fullest, roundest arches that we can. And we never do any distal movement of the teeth. Everything is out and forward. One of the questions we get a lot with these is, how much expansion can you gain with the, with the liners? And it's it really varies. So it varies in how much arch remodeling you get and then how much tipping you get you get on the upper arch you're getting some tipping you're getting arch remodeling on the lower arch you're mainly getting tipping and uprighting but you can get quite a bit I, i've been amazed at some of the cases where our, that have been some um, submitted and looked at and you know that after they come back with the aligners how many how much space we've, we've actually created it, it really is a neat you know an amazing uh amount that you can get. So if it's something that you're questioning uh, that you might not know, like, should I use an expander first? Do I need an expander? Will aligners take care of it? You can always send in the case to us and say, you know, give me a call. Want to talk about the um, 
you know, evaluate for aligners or possibly expansion. Either myself or Missy will contact you and we can go over, you know, what the options are and let you know what our judgments are. We can actually run the cases through the software, see what kind of development we get, and then determine, oh, you know, if I want more. I want it to be wider. Then we can talk about using an expander first and then aligners. We'll go through that a little bit later on. But this is Dr. Moralia's protocol. Widen out these posteriors and get these anteriors forward. Get them out of the way. So this is a great example where you can see all the incisal wear on these centrals, these laterals. These teeth need to be out here. So we would actually be using this central as our key tooth and just kind of rotating it around this fulcrum. We're not trying to pull this back to meet this central here. We're trying to push this central out here and get that tooth to rotate. So once that's rotated, we want these teeth moved out. We're not trying to pull them back. We wanna make sure we have plenty of room and overjet so that the mandible can come forward. And as we do this, a lot of times you're gonna open up space between the laterals or there may be some space in between the centrals because they're undersized. And that's all built into the protocol. You're gonna see extra spaces in these cases. We can align them when you do your, your checks through the SMILE summary. We'll go through that in a minute. Well, we can move the spacing around however you want it, but this is designed to open up spaces if, these, if need be, because we wanna go wider and we wanna go forward and then to come back later with either you know, bonding or veneers to close that space up instead of using retraction mechanics to close the space. We wanna get the teeth out to where they need to be and then fill in the space as necessary. So what you get with our expand aligners, it's one fee, it's $1,300. That includes all the line aligners you need to treat the case. You get one-on-one -on -one tech support with our expert technician, that's Missy. She runs our clear department. She's our number one clear tech uh, support staff and she does a great job. She's got over 15 years experience and she'll really help you work with you. And, you know, she's your go-to person to make sure that we get these cases the way you want them and get them all designed. But you can pick up the phone and call her during our hours, 7.30 to 4. You can email her directly and I'll share her email with you at the end. Uh, but that you can talk with her directly and she'll take care of it. It's calling her directly. She's here in St. Louis. Uh, you're not calling a foreign country or anything else. You're getting a technician right here in St. Louis that's got the experience and will know what you're doing over time, get a rapport with you, know how you like your cases done, and you can really work well with her. She's great. So, um, and with this, it also comes with three free refinements over the three years, and we send along a set of upper and lower clear uh, airway retainers with it at the end. So it, it gives you quite a bit. Um, everything that you're going to need. One of the things you're going to find with these aligners is you don't need a lot of refinements. Because of the way the setups are made, we'll get them out. You may need a couple aligners at the end to finish up, but for the most part, we don't do a lot of refinements. They really track well, and you get the results that you want from the ClinCheck. How to get the, how to, um, the process for doing this? Basically, you're going to submit either digital scans or working models or even PVS impressions. We accept all three. We probably get right now about two thirds of the cases are submitted digitally and maybe a third of them are working models or um, PVS impressions. Doesn't matter to us how you send them in. I will say, though, that, you know, after working with the digital scans over the years, they're more accurate and they're better than the working models. Uh, I just feel we get a better fit with the appliances. I think the aligners track better. Um, scanner, digital scans are much better, uh, but we can take the working models too if you want. When you send in the case and the notes, you're going to specifically want to request expand aligners per Dr. Moralia. That ensures that you're going to get his setup and you get the whole package that comes with it. So once we get it, we're going to submit these, your scans um, to a, our design company, which is called uh, Full Contour, or it's the Three Shape Design Company. They're going to do the setups exactly um, like Dr. Moralia's protocol. We've worked with them extensively. Dr. Moralia's worked with us and with them extensively. I and mean, we spent a ton of time going through this, making sure everything was right, having him check random cases to make sure that they were the way he wanted them. Um, he doesn't check everyone now, 
because we've got this down so well that we can just send them through and we can go from there. So it's been a really good partnership with him to be able to get these exactly the way he want them, wants them so that we can deliver them to you the way they need to be. When that setup's complete, you're going to get an email with a link and a token code to access that case. So you're going to open the link, uh, copy and paste the token code into the access part of it, and that's going to open you up to our smile summary. We're going to go through some screenshots real quick about what it looks like, and then I'm going to attempt to bring up an actual case and uh, try not to cut myself off or uh, disconnect myself on it. But this is the basic first screen that you see with our smile summary. It allows you to toggle between either before and after results, or you can hit play here and it'll show you the movement for each individual stage. This is a real typical case that we um, have done. It's actually Lauren's son's case that we're, we're going through and doing right now. You can look at them in full occlusion. You can look at the right or the left. You can do just the upper, just the lower. You can hold it and move the model just like all the other 3D um, software. So it, it gives you tons of options um, to be able to view them and you can play or look at the stages to see what the results are gonna be as you go. Here's a, you know, this was, this is the after, this is the results that we're getting after the eight aligners, you can see the arch is nice and wide. Anteriors are forward. There's actually some spacing between the laterals. That was, you know, set up on purpose because we've got extra space. We're not trying to retract these. We want to have spacing between those teeth to make sure uh, that there's they're in the right position and there's plenty of room for the mandible. There's a grid function on this that you can overlay. The grid is not in a one-to-one -one or one millimeter. Um, ratio like some of the other viewing software is. We're working on that. As of now, we have not been able to get that developed, but I'm hoping that we will soon. I, I'm really trying to get that to go. Right now, the grid is basically just a reference point for you to see how the teeth have moved, but not necessarily a measuring tool to see how much they've moved. So it it does help, but it it's I wish it was more exact and we're working on fixing that, but um, this is you know what we've got for now. You'll also be able to view a chart um, that will movement chart that'll show you how the teeth were moved and in what direction so that you can kind of get an idea of, you know, what the movements were. If there was any IPR that was needed, it would be indicated um, on this chart. Or if you needed attachments, that would also be indicated. Like I said, a lot of these cases don't need it. Um, they're because of the setups that we're using. But if they are, you know, you'll be able to find them there on this chart. So uh, if you like the change, if you'd like to make any changes, there's a spot for you to submit notes. You can hit redesign and that'll go back and it'll be redesigned. And then once those are done, you'll get another email so that you can go and look at it again and determine if you know how the setup is and how the changes are. If you're happy with the setup, you can hit approved. We'll get a notification uh, that they've been approved and we'll begin fabricating the aligners from there. So it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Okay, I'm gonna attempt to do this live. So we'll see how this works. Uh, let's see. So, all right. Uh, don't know if I did this right or not. Go ahead and share your screen again. Share a new screen to the browser. Uh, that's right. I skipped yep. the steps. Skip the steps. At least I didn't so, disconnect us, right? No, it's, <laughs> you're doing great. All right. There we go. How's that? Great. Perfect. Okay. So this is what you'll get. Um, and what it allows you to do when you open up the software, you can go and hit play and it'll show you how the arch moves at each individual stage. Or if you want to just do before and after, you can do that as well. What's neat with this before and after, and it's good to show the patients and parents this too, you can see how narrow these buckle corridors are. If you hit after, you can see how much we've brought them out. And that's the movement that we're looking to do is to bring those out that way. If you want to look at the side, you can rotate these any way that you want, see how the overjet's going to look, all those things. Um, just the upper, if you want to just look at the upper, you can do that. 
and you can see the movement. Again, we're trying to move everything out and forward, rotate and move it out and see how it goes. So you can do the, it'll show you at each individual state. So it, it's a nice, uh, it's nice viewing software, works great. Allows you a lot of options with it. So before I try to get too fancy, let's see. Then if you scroll down, oh, here's the grid portion. You can lay that over, kind of see how the teeth are moved out. Like I said, it, you can't tell, do actual measurements with it, but you can get a feel for uh, how the teeth are moving out and up and away. So uh, then if you scroll down a little bit, then you can go through and see the movement charts and that type of thing. And then in the action portion is where you can either submit to redesign or sent, submit for approval. And that'll allow you us to go ahead and make them or redesign it if you wanna do it. Most of the time they should go through without any problem. Every once in a while, there may be a reason you wanna redesign up where you want spacing put or uh, you know just something you wanna add or even have more expansion or more forward movement. So we can do all that for you, however you want to do it. So I'm going to try to go back here, stop share, and share screen. Gosh, I think I did it. Did it. All right. Good deal. So that's the, uh, that's the expand aligners. They're great. We've had really good feedback from the doctors that have been using it. I really encourage you to give them a try. Um, it, it's been really a, a good product. Really good. Really happy with them. So we had some feedback um, originally that one of the boxes that we were using was kind of chintzy. So we just redesigned our box. Uh, this is the way the aligners are going to come back. We've got a slot for each one of the aligners in here. We have, we'll throw in some chewies um, just to kind of help the patient a little bit with seating them, and then you'll get a retainer case. It'll all come back in this really nice professional box. Really happy with how it turned out um, and excited. It. The feedback from it's been awesome. It's it's really a nice piece to be able to add and, and contribute with it. So we've talked a lot, and I've tried to cover a lot of the different, um, different things that have come up and offer some tips. We could do a whole day on tips and tricks, but uh, hopefully these were helpful for you. If you still have questions or something I didn't address, you can always give us a call. Um, this is our appliance or appliance hotline number, which is our 800 number for the lab. Uh, so you can give us a call. We're here central time, 730 to four. You can talk to me if it's for the aligners. You can talk to Missy. Uh, Al from our lab is also really good. He's our general manager. He can he's in charge of tech support as well. So if you can't reach me, you can get a hold of Al and he's he can help you as well. One thing to always do though is identify yourself as an airway health doctor uh, that you're following Dr. Moralia's protocols because we get we have customers doing all kinds of different things. We want to make sure that we're talking to you in the um, techniques and appliances that you're used to using and that uh, you've been trained on. And that way we won't be talking about stuff that is way out of bounds or is not you know, within your realm or techniques. So that's always important to do that. One a best way to probably reach me is through email. You can email me pictures or questions. Um, whatever you need. And I'm you know, more than happy to answer as, as much as I can to get right back with you with the emails. My email address, Kevin at Lab.com. If you have questions about the aligners um, or about your aligner cases, I'd go directly through Missy. Uh, her email is Missy S at Lab.com, And those are the best ways to kind of, to get a hold of us, uh, especially with pictures, questions, that type of thing. That's all I've got. Um, this is a picture of our lab in August. We'll have been in here two years. So it's amazing how fast it's gone. We still have pictures we haven't hung on the walls, but uh, we're doing, you know, moving re along really well and really happy with everything. So I hope you've, you've learned something from this and let me know if you have any questions or uh, want to talk about more things in detail. We're here for you. Great. Thank you so much, Kevin. It was very helpful. And um, okay. I'm just going to go ahead and just do some follow-up um, slides because I just want to be mindful of the hour and then we will run hour with extra with um, extra Q&A. But I just want to make sure everyone is aware of how they can 
uh, you know, next steps and how they can um, become airway dentists. So let me just go ahead and share my screen. So Cheryl, I'm okay. Well, we're thrilled that we're actually announcing today that we've had um, a virtual Clearline University course um, at the dental, dental festivals in the past and had wonderful feedback from it. So we're making this a new virtual course, which is for Dr. and team. Um, and Dr. Ben Moralia is running it. We're really excited. So save the date for August 11th. It's a Friday. It will be available on demand as well. So this way you can learn about expansion and all of the many health benefits clear line of therapy can provide for your patients. And you'll be shocked at how many patients will benefit just from clear line of therapy alone. As a hygienist working with patients, if I saw eight patients a day, adult patients, I was talking to eight patients a day about how they would benefit from clear line of therapy unless they already had, um, had it done in the past in, in the correct manner in an expansive way. So here are just some testimonials um, about the course and we're really thrilled to kind of bring this back in a more, um, in, a, in a way that more people can learn and then apply Dr. Moralia's expansion techniques. Um, we have rebranded and call it now expand aligners. It was airway aligners, but we just wanted to be more inclusive if you would of just perhaps people who aren't into airway yet, right? It's kind of like airway in disguise. So um, we're rebranding re it as expand aligners because that's what we do. Uh, so we thought it was a simple way to get um, our benefits across and, and let you know what we do with our aligners. So we're really thrilled about that. You went through this very um, very efficiently. So thank you, Kevin. Um, if you wanted to have access to our expand aligners, you do need to have the training of the Clear Aligner University, which I said will be available on demand if you're not available August 11th. But you could also take our adult uh, mini residency, which, which teaches you Clear Aligner therapy plus expansion, um, removable expansion techniques for the adults. So that'll be September 22nd. Um, also, you can take our pediatric mini residency um, to use as your stage two uh, techniques with clear aligner therapy as well. Um, so we have different options of different courses coming up. October 6th, we're actually doing a live pediatric mini residency. We haven't done this since uh, March 1st of 2020. So we're excited to bring that back for those who prefer a live learn. We are offering that October 6th. Uh, that'll be followed by Dr. Boyd's advanced mini residency in Fort Lauderdale at the Westin. Uh, and then we have different dates for um, the rest of our courses. Um, a, lot of pay, a lot of questions here that which we'll get to in a moment are about early uh, childhood expansion techniques. And Dr. Kevin Boyd teaches under 72 months specifically using expansion appliances from ages three um, you know, on up. So this is considered more of an advanced course or a stage two course if advanced is, is a little uh, intimidating, but um, it's something that is great to have tools in your toolbox to learn under 72 months of how to um, use expansion appliances and treat um, the craniofacial respiratory complex as Dr. Boyd had coined. Dr. Moralia will be there as well. Uh, Fort Lauderdale, it'll also be live streamed. So if you prefer comfort of your own home, we offer both options. Uh, we have an advanced mini residency, which will be virtual October 13th and 14th with Dr. Moralia. And it's just continuing on for more tools in your toolbox. Uh, for the older teens, uh, using actually bracket and wire techniques with the carrier SLX system, um, it's really a must have to have the full complete portfolio. So you have all the tools in your toolbox to help all of your patients breathe, sleep and thrive. We have our team myo courses. So we have different options if you're interested in learning, if you're an existing myofunctional therapist or want to become a myofunctional therapist, or if you're a dentist who wants to learn more about it, there's different options for you. And I invite you to visit our website, uh, specifically focusing on the myo part. I'm also free if you want to have a call about what would be best for you. Um, we have our mini myo course coming up live. So that's exciting. Visit our website, but it's also on demand. And if you're an orthodontist who wants a peer-to-peer -peer type of learn, um, we invite you to join us for Dr. Brett Christensen's mini residency. He's focusing on pediatric airway orthodontics from his 30-year career. Um, he has a lot of the same philosophies as Dr. Boyd and Dr. Moralia, but you'll learn different tips and tricks coming from an orthodontist point of view. 
or if you want more orthodontists to be more airway centric, perhaps steer them this way to learn different techniques that maybe they can intercept earlier uh, versus treating malocclusion. If you're in need of a myofunctional therapist in your office and don't have one, we do supply, um, offer. Uh, we work with Brittany uh, Sierra, and she is our um, telehealth oral facial myofunctional therapist guru. She's wonderful at teaching all ages, so feel free to reach out to me on that. One of the most popular things that, that we offer is really being on our locator. I can't tell you how many patients are asking me, Lauren, where is there an airway focused dentist near me? Uh, this is through social media. This is through email. This is through Instagram daily. I am asked and I have, I have heard back from many of our airway dentists who have taken our courses that they get plenty of referrals from this locator. So once you take our course, we put you on the map. Um, we're calling out Nevada here. I don't know if anyone knows anyone in the Las Vegas area, but we really need Montana, Nevada. We need to fill up some more of these dots here. Uh, and Alaska would be wonderful. So um, we are global. So if you if you are looking for airway centric dentists, um, you can go to our locator and also find them globally as well. Please join our Airway uh, Health Meetup Facebook group. We share tips and tricks here, as well as upcoming events. And it's just a great community to join. Uh, and we're really excited about our Airway Palooza. Some of you were there last year, I can see, who are attending today. It was really a, a wonderful two days of just collaborating and celebrating, kind of taking the road less travel and all that that brings to you as a dentist, as a myofunctional therapist, as an allied healthcare professional, you're really on the cutting edge of the airway health movement. So we're, we're offering another one in New Orleans at the Ritz-Carlton with a wonderful lineup of speakers. Um, so go visit our website and you can see for yourself what's on its way. We're really uh, thrilled with the Children's Airway First Foundation. They give a lot of free resources. So um, consider donating to them and using them as a resource for your parents who have questions about airway. They do a great job. They have podcasts that are lined up. Um, Dr. Morali is on there. Dr. Boyd is on there. Um, Dr. Shereen Lim. I just think it's an underutilized resource and it's free. So please uh, go visit them and consider a donation. Um, and I know it's coming up on the hour, so we'll get to the Q&A, but I did want to enter, um, give you the code. It's AHS Ohlendorf, as in Kevin Ohlendorf, as in Ohlendorf Appliance Labs. <laughs> and um, you can take our CE, um, our survey. Uh, so please copy down that link. Once you take our survey, enter the code, we can then submit to you your CE certificate to the information that you provide for us. So in order to receive your CE, you do need to take a brief survey. So please copy that down and um, we will send a follow-up email as well. Wow, that was a mouthful. Okay, <laughs> so let's That's get quite to some a lineup. of the questions. <laughs> yeah, but I know it's like next steps. It can be a little overwhelming, but you really just need to learn the philosophy and kind of how to apply this because a lot of these questions that we're getting is in how to apply this. Um, in the chat, you're going to see there are conversations just on this topic alone from Dr. Moralia. So some of the questions that were asked here today were answered in previously recorded chats, airway chats that are always free uh, for anyone to watch. And a lot of doctors show their patients these airway chats because they're really easy to understand and um, all of our guests do a great job at laying it all out. So I'm gonna start with some of the questions that just came up in the chat here. And do you have any good options for retaining expansion if we have to remove the fixed expander earlier than, hold on, it's cut off here. <laughs> earlier than, and then didn't give me. Oh, earlier than indicated. For example, kids with feeding and speech issues that can't tolerate the fixed expander for the full retention time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this comes up, you know, in a number of different ways. And you've got, you've done your expansion. The expanders have to sit there and act as retainers while everything settles in. But if you want to get them out, you can put them in upper and lower uh, lingual arches. And so the process for that is basically you scan them with the appliances in place and send those in. We'll digitally remove the appliances and then just make basic lingual arches that are a lot less um, bulky and you can start your myotherapy with them at that point and it'll hold your arch expansion. What's nice about, what we'll do at the lab is we keep a uh, inventory, a 
record of the band sizes that we use. But if we've used 3D bands, we can go in and just reprint those files and use those. So uh, we can get that kind of stuff to, to uh, remake the second appliance if needed. So that's why it's okay to scan them with the appliances in place. You, the other option is to take the appliances out, scan them, but then put those appliances back in. And that can be really tough to do um, because the bands get all bent up and all kinds of stuff. So, uh, but you've got to have something in place and fixed is better than removable. If you can't get it in or you don't want to use fixed at all, you can try using just some clear uh, suck down retainers that you can make in your office. But if they don't wear them, the arch is going to collapse if you don't give them that time to, to hold the arches like they're supposed to. Great. And we're going to add the uh, survey link in the chat so you can copy that for easy access. Um, is there a cost difference between 3D printed bands and conventional? They are. The 3D bands are about $15 per band more per appliance. Okay. But then you save the, the chair time, correct? Exactly. You save an appointment with the separators. Uh, I think you get a better fit and I, I they'll stay in better. There's a lot of advantages to them, but they are a little bit more. It's a lot and more Okay. Does a scan versus an impression make a substantial difference in the overall fit and possibly the effectiveness of the aligners? Uh, I I think it does. You know, I do think that the scans are better. You get a really good one-to-one -one ratio and an exact replication of the arch. It's always amazed me over the years that we ever really got impressions and models to work. There's so many factors involved with them between you know, mixing the impression material, getting it stable, then mixing the stone and getting it in there and, and every, there's just too many, too much room for air. We do accept them. We do have great cases that work out just fine with them, but uh, we do prefer the, the digital scans. My functional therapist listeners wants to, a breakdown of the best way to help decide the best approach with appliance therapy. When to choose what? What are the advantages and disadvantages? You know, that goes into a lot of different things. And I, I really think the courses are the best places to go uh, to take Dr. Moralia's course and then to take Dr. Boyd's course because there's so many different factors involved uh, between fixed and removable. Everybody has their theories on what works best and, and what they use in their practice. So I, I think as a technician, I'm kind of, you know, Switzerland here on what to use and what's best. I think you're better listening to the experts on that than me. What about, I guess it's because it's coming from a myofunctional therapist, um, about the order of myofunctional gotcha. therapy and appliance therapy. Can you touch on that? So, right. In my mind, you know, one of the problems that the patient has, why they need myofunctional therapy is because the arches are too constricted. And so to try to do therapy before you have the arches the proper size where the tongue can function properly is not necessarily ideal. I think it's better to get the appliances in first, get the arches widened out to where they need to be, get plenty of room for the tongue, and then start the therapy at that point. It just, I think your therapy will go faster uh, and you won't, they won't have to be in it as long and you'll be more effective. And any tips and tricks for adjusting anterior leaf arms on fixed expanders? So as those, ex those anterior sweep springs, as the arch is expanded, they're going to start to um, need to be adjusted because they're made at the very beginning when the arch is narrow. As they widen out, those springs are gonna come away from each other, but you basically just wanna take a three prong instrument and just go in there and put little bends in them to get them to straighten up. You don't need to make big movements on them. The wires just kind of need to be up against the, you know, the, the lingual of the teeth a little bit and just make some periodic bends as you need them. As you go along um, is all you need. Three prongs should be all you need. You can do them in the inner orally. You don't definitely don't want to take the appliances out to adjust them, but just some real simple minor adjustments should work great. And at what time should clear aligners be initiated? Beginning, middle, or end of upper expansion? I guess they're referring to the lower. Sure. Arch. There's a bunch of different ways to go about this. And we have our liner system set up where if you want to start with an upper expander and then do the lower um, aligners at the same time, you certainly can. But to me, it makes more sense if you're going to do expansion first to go ahead and do upper arch expansion only, get that upper arch in the proper width, 
proper development, and then come in with clear liners upper and lower together at the same time um, and just do it all at one time. The two phases works great and you can certainly do it that way, but I just think you get, it goes a little bit faster and they're not in as a liners as long if you're doing them all together. We can also do a better job after the expansion is completed of getting the occlusion in a better position than if we do the aligners on the lowers first, because you're expanding the uppers and it's going to mess up the occlusion. You're developing the lower arch. Well, then the you got to kind of get the upper to reform. And sometimes you have to do refinements on the lower to get that occlusion locked in appropriately. So I think the two separate phases um, work a little bit better if you can. But if you want to get started and do the lower at the same time, you certainly can. And we do that for a lot of doctors. And why is RPE preferred by most traditional orthos over BioBlock, in your opinion? I think it's just because that's what they're trained on. You know, the RPE has been around for a hundred years. And so that's just what they're used to using. Um, a lot of the orthos really prefer fixed expanders over removable just for the compliance and the uh, pa patient maintenance issue of it, with it. It's kind of goes back to that saying, it's the way we've always done it and that's the way we do it. Uh, in my mind personally, I, I think the removables do just a good a job, if not better. Um, and I think they're more hygienic they're easier for the patients to tolerate, but if they don't wear them, they don't work. So I think it's just that they have, the orthos haven't been trained on them and don't know a lot about them. Okay. And also can, um, <laughs> let me just see a good one here. A lot of this you covered. So uh, what about appliances for under six years old? Again, I, Dr. Boyd's the expert on that. You know, we do both fixed and removable appliances for patients that age, but uh, Dr. Boyd really does a great job in his course of going through the probably the most important part of it, which is the patient management of it and showing why he uses removables when he does, why he first fix in certain situations. And he's doing them all day, every day. I can promise you we're making all of his expanders for him. And he's he if anybody knows it, it's him. He's he's incredible with them. He's the expert. And what type of expansion, tooth tilting versus bone widening, is achievable with aligners? And is there an age limit for results? Sure. So we do aligners from patients, you know, at all ages, from mixed dentition to full permanent dentition, even patients in their 60s and 70s. So, and we've gotten great results with all of them. On the lower arch, you're pretty much always just going to get uprighting of the posteriors. You're not going to get any bone remodeling. It's going to be mainly tilting the teeth. On the upper arch, though, the aligners will give you some tipping of the teeth, which in a lot of cases is needed, but you're also going to get some remodeling of the upper arch, too. And our aligners are set up for that specifically with that in mind, that we're not just trying to tip the teeth. We're trying to get an overall arch remodeling on the upper arch and arch development. That's why we're stressing going with expansion and anterior movement. But on the upper arch, it's not just tooth tipping. It's moving the whole upper arch and remodeling it. You're not going to split the suture in the upper arch by any means within a liner, but you definitely can get it to reshape, recontour as you go along. Do you have any good options for retaining retaining expansion if we have to remove the fixed expander earlier than indicated? For example, kids with feeding and speech issues that can't tolerate the fixed expander for the full retention time. Yeah, we did that. That was the first one. Uh, with the, you know, with the lingual arch in there, um, you know, you could take the appliances out or I'm sorry, scan them with the appliances in place, send that in and we can make lingual arches to help hold that arch form and hold that space um, so that they can continue on and, and don't have to deal with the bulkiness of the appliances. And I think this is referring to the aligner. So let's focus on that. Are these considered okay. true skeletal expansion or just tipping teeth or maybe compare the two? Um, Sure. So when you're talking about skeletal expansion, you're talking mainly, you're basically talking about expanding the upper arch and splitting the suture. It's not doing that. What you're getting on the on the lower arch, you're definitely getting, to, you're just tipping the teeth, you're uprighting up on the lower arch. On the upper arch, you're not necessarily, you're getting 
minor skeletal changes. It's not splitting the suture, but you are remodeling the bone. The bone is able to remodel. Um, and that's what allows you to get that wide, nice, broad upper arch form. Your, the teeth will be tipped out appropriately. A lot of times in these constricted arches, they're too narrow. And so we definitely build in that part of tipping the teeth out, but we're also remodeling and widening out the upper arch as it goes along and moving things forward. And what about with the expansion appliances? The expanders, the upper arch, you are getting true skeletal changes because um, you are definitely splitting the suture in most of them, um, especially depending on the age, the younger patients. So you are definitely getting a skeletal change with the upper expanders. The lower the same, you're not gonna get a skeletal change on the lower, you're just gonna get that uprighting with the lower expanders. Great, and there's a question in the chat about the accepted ideal widths of maxilla and mandible. And we're just gonna post um, our cheat sheet that Dr. Moralia has with the transverse measurements. Um, yep. You also have the, the transverse sticks that we uh, that we haven't really um, <laughs> kind I of- know. I I should have grabbed them. I totally forgot about them. So okay. um, I'll post it. I'll post them on sure. the Facebook page so everybody can see them. But what we came up with is a simple way. I know Dr. Moralia talks about using a cotton roll, but what we came up with is a simple way for you to just kind of do a real quick visual that both the patients and the parents can see how narrow the arch is. And we just created some sticks that are like a T basically. And they, the T has different millimeter widths. So you can just place the T between the upper first molars to see, you know, ideal, how close it is, or get some, um, get some estimates of how narrow or what shape the arch is. And they're in five millimeter increments. They go from like, I think 30, 30, 35, 40, and 45. And they're 3D printed. So you can you know, wipe them down and use them for multiple patients. They're not, you know, disposable or anything, but it's, they're nice. We've had, we've had, we had a bunch of orders after Airway Palooza last year because I had brought them to that and a lot of people liked them. So they've been nice. I need to do a better job of uh, sharing that information and I will. Yeah, definitely. We're always working on solutions. So I think that that's a great one, which we will yeah. uh, keep you updated on that for sure. Um, and then the last question, unless another question comes up in the chat would be, does clear line of therapy cause a posterior open bite due to the hinge motion and the fact that the aligners occupy the same amount of space into arch in both anterior and posterior? I think that from what I've observed and listened to different people talk about this, and it's a common thing. I mean, we we hear it, you know, because doctors will, they, may, they won't have used our clear liners, but they've used other companies and they've got the posterior open bite. And they want to know if there's an appliance that'll fix it. What I think is happening more than anything is when the aligner setups are designed for retraction and they're, in, and they're, and they're preventing the mandible from being able to bite forward because you're retracting the anterior teeth, you're actually trapping the mandible back and causing an interference. And because of that, the patients can't get their teeth together. You're also, in some of these other setups, the other companies are using is they're not widening out the arches enough. And so you're, you're trying to force the teeth into too narrow of a spot and the mandible isn't allowed to, to bite forward in a normal position. And so you're, you're trapping it. When you do an expansive and a forward setup like our expand aligners have, it creates the overjet to allow the mandible to come forward to the proper position so that you don't, so that the occlusion can line up as well and you don't have that interference. And so we, we take that into consideration on our setups 100%. And we actually build in a little bit more overjet than normal so that we allow for the mandible to come forward. And I think it's that trapping of the mandible that prevents um, the posteriors from being able to occlude properly. My opinion as a lab guy, but you know, that's kind of what I what I've seen over the years. And Dr. Moralia talks about that in our archive um, chats in more detail. If you right. want to have our, our transverse measurement cheat sheet, um, kind of looks like this. I don't know if you can see. I use this as my, my mouse pad. Um, I don't know if you can get, look at that. But it's available on our website. It's also posted um, on our Instagram account, Airway Health Solutions. Uh, and also we have a nice reels with Dr. Moralia discussing the transverse measurement and how we came up with these numbers. So it's very good to share with, with parents as well as your healthcare professional team. So 
Well, I think we're out of questions. So this was a really, really um, productive hour and 15 minutes. Thanks for those who um, stayed extra. We just wanted to get all your questions in. Please reach right. out to Kevin. He's a valuable resource. Visit our website, save the date, Carolina U University, August 11th. You can email us at info at airwayhealthsolutions.com. If you want me to put your name on the list, we'll send it out right when we open up for registration. But we're really excited about that. Excited about Airway Palooza. We're excited about our expand aligners, and we're excited about all of you really helping us with this airway health movement to help more and more patients breathe, sleep, and thrive. So spread the word. Our, our YouTube channel and all of our conversations are always free. So um, please free, feel free to share them with all your healthcare professionals and let's get this movement moving, right? <laughs> In the right directions. <laughs> Up and right. out. So, Up and out. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Kevin, you want to just have any closing remarks? Because I know sometimes it can be scary. You know, people aren't, they may not know about this. It seems so foreign to them, but yeah. with the right education and then with the partnership that we have, maybe just kind of, you know, kind of calm those nerves down if they're interested in starting, but may have some hesitation. Sure. The biggest thing I can tell you is that we're here to help and we're here to answer your questions. If you have, you know, if you have cases you want to start, you're considering send them in, send the scans in, send the models, put down, you know, call me about this. I'm an airway health provider. I'd like to talk about this case. You can send it in. One of us will contact you. We'll answer all your questions individually. There's no charge for that service at all. All that tech support is completely free. And we're more than happy to, to work you through these. Um, I just did a Zoom meeting last night with one of the doctors who was getting ready to place their first, you know, fixed expander and just wanted to kind of talk through it. And that it worked great. We spent about 10 minutes, you know, walk through it and just help put her at ease a little bit about how to, what to look for, how to cement it, answer her questions. It's easier sometimes when you have the appliance in your hand, but you can definitely, you know, do that. If you are in treatment and you want to take some photos and email them to us, you know, and just con we can comment on them. You know, I'm I'm a month into treatment. This is what I'm seeing. How does this look? Be more than happy to answer those questions for you. Email them to us at any stage. We're not just going to be here at the beginning, and then once you get your appliance, you can't get a hold of us. We want to be here from start to finish with you and work with you on all the cases that you have. Uh, our tech support, like I said, is always free. We never charge for it, so please feel free to to call. We we do it all the time. Uh, I'll share a secret with you. He may not want you to know this or not, but I, Dr. Moralia sends cases in and says, Kevin, what do you think about this? And so, <laughs> you know, what can we do? This is what I'm up against. What are your thoughts? So uh, don't wow. tell him I, don't tell him I said that, but uh, you know, him and I still consult on stuff uh, as we go through and as things come up, because things are going to come up you haven't seen. And after a little while, you'll know what you need to do, but we're here to help you at the beginning for sure. Great. Thank you so much. And the code again is AHS, all capitals, all endorph, all capitals for the survey link to get your CE credit. The, um, the link for our survey is in the chat. So we hope that you enjoy this and that you got a lot out of it. I know I did. Thanks again, Kevin. And thank you all sure. for your commitment to airway health. We'll see you soon. All right. Great. Thanks for having me. My pleasure.